Hello, uh, my name is Greg and I'm a founder of a company called Growbots. Uh, our goal is to create AI for sales and our challenge is to replace human-based selling process with software. So we want to create automatic salesmen that will replace people, sending emails, doing calls, this kind of stuff. Uh, we started this company a year ago uh, as two guys and uh, after a year we learned a lot about sales and scaling business uh, in the US. So I want to tell you today about uh, studying your sales strategy from Poland to US because uh, when we started the company we were sitting in the basement in clockwork uh, on uh, Puławska Street and we never been to US, we never had the US customer before, but our goal from the very beginning was uh, to create a global company. And uh, after gaining some traction, we also wanted to become one of the first Polish companies raising money in the US and really uh, starting our business from there. So, as I said, we started uh, a year ago, uh, during this year, we grew from uh, two people to 16 people, and we are hiring more than, four ten, uh, more than 10 positions right now. So if you are interested, I'll tell you more in the, uh, on the end what kind of people we are looking for. Our annual revenue right now is more than 1 million zloty. Uh, our valuation is more than 20 million zloty, so it's pretty good for Polish conditions. We managed to get into one of the best words, uh, startup accelerators, 500 startups, and also got some money uh, from Polish investors. And the best part is that we still have no software. So uh, we didn't sell any software, nobody's seen any software, uh, but still we got those figures. So I want to tell you how to get to this point and how to uh, like skyrocket your customer development and like product vali validation process into a running business. So uh, we got those numbers because we have traction and we got to the accelerator. Our strategy from the very beginning was super, super simple. We wanted to get customers from the US, we wanted to uh, get initial traction build the product and uh, get investment from the US. The plan was good, but we had to change it a bit, and I will tell you uh, more about that in a sec. But still, those are your two main goals when you want to build a global company. So you need customers and you need global partners that will support your business and, and give you like a name, because like we are in Poland, nobody gives a fuck about Poland in the US, they think really it's like the, every third conversation I hear that, you know, they're in Poland in the third world countries and I'm like, fuck, <laughs> fuck. But still, this is the opinion about us. So they know that we have good developers, but that's all. So you need to get uh, some partners to validate your business in the US and you can get those this in the accelerator. All right. but. To the point, so as I said, we started from getting customers in the US and uh, I didn't tell you what our business is about. <laughs> so what we do is lead generation. We help B2B companies to generate more sales. And uh, it sounds like a tricky area and the product we wanted to build was super complicated. So we started from providing our customers with the value they needed from us, so the leads. They wanted to get interested people to jump on a call with their sales team, and this is what we started selling. Uh, what is interesting is that we never sent any sales email before starting this company, so we had to learn everything from scratch, already having some customers paying for it, so we had to learn fast. Uh, I want to tell you how we started our sales strategy. So we got our initial 10 customers from two channels. One was content marketing and the other was of course direct sales because this is what we do. Uh, so we started from 
um, creating our own blog before even uh, starting a company. So we started a blog called growthhacking.biz and we were, we just created three pieces of content and then we wanted to validate our knowledge if we can actually, you know, be interesting to people in the US. So what we did was we contacted uh, about 20 to 30 uh, influencers and this is super shit email. You know, I'm, I'm really ashamed to see that after a year. So we did all of these mistakes. So I gave access to my account to Luke, who was sending the email. And as you can see, it's, it's obvious that I didn't send, uh, send this email. He fucking pasted the, the, the content from Hackpad where I wrote it. And we added like those really bad parts, like uh, feel free to share it, yeah, this kind of stuff, but still, this is a marketing director of Kissmetrics. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's fine. Uh, and as you can see, he was interested in featuring us on Kissmetrics blog. So we, I wrote the blog post. It was in top five of last year's Kissmetrics blog post when you count like shares. So it was pretty good. And it validated that, okay, content marketing can be a good strategy for us. So we created a landing page for our product. And we decided to focus on one influencer because he has the best blog about SaaS growth strategies on the world. And this guy is called Lincoln Murphy. Uh, so what we found out is that he only followed 20 something people on Twitter. So it's pretty easy to get in front of this guy if you make friends with these people. So what I did uh, was I started conversation with all of them. <laughs> uh, 10 of them followed me back and started talking to me. So I started sharing some content with them and asking about their advice. Some of them retweeted it. It was a great success. And then Lincoln entered our blog and he left a comment. So, uh, that was it. The first success, we got a comment. And then, you know, you don't go to Lincoln Murphy and pitch him, so we started with giving him some advice. So, I said, thank you for uh, uh, sharing this idea. Here is something that can be useful for you. And after a month or so, I came back to him and said, man, I wrote a blog post, and I think it will be awesome for your blog. And that was success because uh, he published it and we got some leads. So in two days, we got about 20 pretty good leads out of which we converted three people into customers. And it doesn't sound so impressive, but uh, mostly people don't like to talk about numbers, but I'm a sales guy, so I'll tell you. So. Each of those customers was more than 3,000 bucks uh, of recurring revenue for us. So it's pretty good because out of one blog post, in two days, we got 10K of USD in recurring revenue. So that was a great success. And what's even better is that he started featuring us among all of our competitors. So we have two main competitors and we are listed in one line with them in his next article. So this is also very good that if you really start making friends with people and start relation with people, they will become your brand ambassadors. And uh, you know, then you go to the conference, you say, hi, Lincoln, and he says, hi, Greg. And it's awesome because this is some super freaking awesome guy. And I'm a guy from Poland. Nobody knew about me uh, last year, but now we can just talk. So this was our uh, first strategy, content marketing. Uh, so how you do it? It's super simple. Create good content, contact 50 influencers, ask for advice. So just share your note, ask them what they think about it. Some of them will reply, it's a horseshit. I got it from Plia, for example, from Conversion Excel, but I didn't give a fuck about that. Uh, I still got featured on uh, Kissmetrics and I made friends 
with uh, many other people. So uh, then choose the people that will really help you to elevate your business and get customers. The second thing we did was direct sales. And we didn't do it with simple emails because we thought it's kind of too sellish even we do it myself. We do it ourselves. So we acquired our customers from Twitter. So all of the people that will tell you that social media don't sell are wrong. Uh, here is how I got one of the first customers from Twitter. The guy is called uh, Chris Hexton. And he's a really awesome guy also. He created a company called Vero, and he's also featured on most of the best startups blogs and one of the best marketing experts ever. So when you got the lead like this, you don't want to fuck up. So this is all great about selling and getting in front of people. When we started the company, we knew that we can do it and we can deliver even if we didn't do any sales emails before. So we read a, a lot about that, we did some tests, and when we actually started working with customers, it looked like this. They were fucking surprised it's working because they checked all of our competitors and it was shit. So it was really good for us to find out that customers like what we do, they were happy to pay us, and they became also like kind of brand ambassadors. Uh, Two months ago, I was uh, on the conference called Suster Annual, and uh, I met Chris for the first time in person, and he was going with me for like two hours and introducing me like, this is Greg, he did awesome job for us. It's great. So you want to get uh, really satisfied customers, and this is what I mean by traction. Not only money on your bank account, but happy customers. We didn't lose any customers for like eight months straight. And uh, it's, it's pretty impressive when you only start a business and you are just like a few guys in Poland that, didn't, that, that never did it before. Uh, so you want to deliver. It's, it's really important. Uh, how to get people? How to get customers on Twitter? Also super simple. Get 1,000 followers on Twitter so you look serious. No one wants to talk with the guy who is followed by no one. And it's kind of painful process because you have to go and follow people and follow people and follow people and delete them, etc., etc. But you can get to like 1,000 followers in a month or two. Make a private list of 50, 100 people you want to convert into customers, start talking with them. They will share article, comment, this kind of stuff. They will check your website. If they're interested, they will fill in the form or they will tell you, I want a demo. As simple as this. So at this point, we had traction. We had about 10 paying customers. We felt that, okay, we have some kind of product market feed. People want to pay us. We knew how much they want to pay us. The next step was building a product. Uh, and to build a product, we needed money. I went to US for a month uh, to find out if we can get money, just you know, getting some intros, meeting investors, trying to raise something. It doesn't happen. Everyone is telling it. We wanted to check it. It's not working. So if you don't know anyone in the US, you go there, you want to raise money, it's not going to work. So you need accelerators. And if we talk about accelerators, there are only two you should choose from. So Y Combinator and 500 Startups. Uh, in the end, we end up at 500 Startups, but the only reason we are there is that we were rejected by YC. <laughs> so uh, we were invited for an interview at YC as well, but uh, still we didn't get in. We didn't have a product. They, they are really interested in seeing your product and seeing how it works. They have this hacker culture. We are mostly business guys at our team, not having a strong uh, development team. Uh, so they were concerned if we can make it. 500 startups didn't have those concerns. They saw our monthly recurring revenue and that was enough for them uh, to get us in. If you think about those accelerators, uh, you should know that they are really different. So Y Combinator 
is much more famous and in my opinion a bit overhyped. Uh, and uh, uh, if you are a Polish company, you mostly go to those kind of uh, programs to get uh, to know new people and extend your network. And the problem at YC is that they only meet once a week. So this is the first problem because uh, you, um, you, you cannot meet a lot of people once a week. At 500 Startups, we are all working in the same co-working space and we have a lot of events going on. So YC is awesome when you want to hack your product and get traction. So it's like Paul Graham is more about, you know, you are awesome guys, you know how to do it, you just do it. And once a week they are pushing you forward. And of course you will get better valuation at the end. So those are really strong pros. And of course we wanted to get to YC as well. So it's not like it's shit. It, it's, it's, it's very good. Uh, but as, as I mentioned, we end up at 500 startups, and this is how our typical day at 500 startups look like. We have distro meetings because they hire four guys to help all of the 30 teams to grow their products. And those meetings are uh, all about growth, traction, uh, performance marketing, this kind of stuff. Uh, you have mentors office hours. So all of those guys such as Lincoln Murphy are just coming to you and you meet them uh, among a group of people like here so you have a chance to go and talk to them. So you don't have to fucking be sneaky again like trying to you know get in front of somebody's followers, attracting them content, etc, etc. You just go and talk with people. We have uh, launch talks and evening fire chats so it's also like uh, mm, awesome people that found that really successful startups are coming up and sharing their stories. Uh, you have partners and batchmates every day among you. So being at 500 startup is something like if they close you with uh, Mike Sadowski and Zions and all of the other most successful Polish entrepreneurs in one room for three or four months, this is what we have there because all of the other guys are also awesome startup founders. So you always have a bunch of people to uh, exchange your ideas and, uh, and you know, figure out something. The best, uh, the best example is that, for example, uh, we started hiring salespeople in the US recently and I never hired the salespeople even in Poland. So what I needed was like a uh, interview script that I, I didn't even know how to pay them. So what's the compensation model, etc. So I just, you know, talked with 10 people and after a few hours I end up with the full uh, interview script. I knew everything about the compensation. Uh, at, uh, on that day, uh, the office hours was held by the head of sales at Rackspace. So he also explained me how they organized the whole, their whole, like, uh, the sales team structure, this, this kind of knowledge is usually not available in Poland. So, so it's pretty important to go there uh, to the US and really meet those people. And the most important part is that you can get interest. So when you are from Poland, you need to meet people, you need to meet customers, investors, and, and, and get you know, find your way in the Silicon Valley. And intro intros are your currency in Silicon Valley. So you introduce someone to someone, someone introduce you to someone other, and 500 startups can give you a lot of really awesome intros. So if you really think about building business in the US, this is the most important part. So if you go to San Francisco alone, you will have a lot of meetings. I was there for a month and I still had like four to five meetings a day with people. I called, emailed them. I really reached out to everyone in my network to get some introductions. You can do it, but it's much easier when you get an intro from a partner at 500 startups, super successful entrepreneur, etc., etc. So 
This is the part that helped us probably the most. We are just launching our product right now and uh, the companies that signed up uh, for this beta are really amazing companies and I'm not sure if I would get them being in Poland. So uh, I think this is all that I wanted to tell you about. If you have some questions, uh, please ask. Thanks, Greg. That was great. Good presentation. Uh, we don't have any awards for this one, but if you have any questions, then uh, feel free to to shoot it at at Greg. <clears throat> Here it is. Can you pass it, please? So. Um, I looked at your website and uh, you're saying you're located in San Francisco and you also, I, I have seen, have ad, uh, like made your names sound English, like you're Greg, there's Tom, there's a Luke and that's okay uh, because you have said uh, in the US they don't care uh, about Poland, they, you, you even said they don't give a fuck about Poland, if I recall collect correctly, but uh, to me there's a difference uh, between not being blatant about your country of origin and uh, but someone Someone septic, uh, not to say malicious, would say you are actively trying to hide uh, where you're from. So my question is, are you? <laughs> so my point is, this is business, not a patriotic contest. So uh, what I'm trying to do is sell as much as I can. And... Uh, you know, if I, can, if I have to pretend to be Greg instead of Grzegorz, and nobody can fucking say this name in English, <laughs> and still I kept my surname, which is Pietruszyński, and, uh, you know, try, try to explain what your name is. I, I had an interview at Grove Hacker TV, and that was the beginning, the, the beginning. So he asked, you have to say your surname because I can't. So it's still pretty tricky. And I hope you are satisfied with this, this level. <laughs> All right. Okay, so I have a question. Why you decided, like, what was the point of time that you decided that you want to go to, uh, uh, what is called, like, 500 startups or whatever? When you were sure that you have enough to go there and why you actually need them at all? So to be completely honest, we only applied to 500 startups because we had everything ready for YC. And I filled the application within like 15 minutes. Uh, so it would be stupid not to do that. Uh, and I, I was not sure, uh, especially after rejection from YC. Mm, we didn't really hope for it. What I learned about uh, application to accelerators from the other founders that got into YC, for example, uh, was that you don't want to show them, ah, because I left the last slide, giveaways, yes. So this is the really important point. Uh, you don't want to show them that you need them. And I didn't really understood what they meant before I got in front of the people at YC. And when I recall the situation, I can say that we were a bit too desperate. So before an interview at 500 Startup, we didn't really practice a lot. We just went for a beer with my co-founder, and that went smooth. And we were just answering their questions. What you want to do is to make some kind of impression that you are doing well, and it is them who want to make a deal here, not you. So, so this is really important. Uh, this, is one, this was one of the insights I got from more than 20 people I did uh, so-called mock-up interviews with before applying to, like before the interview at YC. So we contacted all of the uh, B2B startup companies, founders that we could possibly contact and ask them to you know, help us to 
to do this kind of mock-up interview when they pretend to be Paul Graham and you ask these tricky questions. Uh, yeah, so, so it's, it's, it's hard to say. Okay, yeah, but you still haven't addressed uh, the main question, why you needed them. Like, why you decided to go at all to an uh, accelerator? Like, I was, for example, working in a company that just went straight up to uh, the investors and they got money. Why you need accelerator? Like, can you elaborate on why you want to go to accelerator and not try to grow your business and then go to, like, the, the normal VC investors? Good question. Okay, so uh, the first reason is that we we realized it's super hard to get investment like this, especially not having a product, uh, being from Poland, this kind of you know excuses. Uh, so uh, we realized that accelerator can really help us to uh, start some network in the U.S and help us in the future. So it's more of the long-term decision because short-term, you can get some investment. You can get investment in Europe, you can get investment in the US from some unknown people. It can happen. You can even get investment from really awesome VC fund, but then you only get the, 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 the network of this fund and you are alone in Silicon Valley where, as I said, the currency is interest. So you need to get as many interests as possible. And for Polish people in the US, we decided that, that it will be the easiest way to get to know as many people as we can. And what's the revenue for the 500 startups? Uh, did you give your shares, or you, any equity, or it was a kind of fee for the acceleration program? This is the standard shitty deal they give everyone, so it's like uh, 75k USD for 7% of your company. So on paper the valuation is about one and a half million bucks. <laughs> but of course we were, we were way beyond this, this level. So from the money perspective, it's a bad decision. From the, uh, from the networking perspective, it's a good choice. And long term, we decided that we get, will get value from it. And like uh, in the perks we got from 500 startups alone, when it comes to infrastructure, we got, for example, uh, credits for servers for 1 million slotted. So. We are using a lot of servers in our company, so for example, this was worth more for us than their investment. Yeah, um, I'm Eric and I'm from Finland, so I'm representing Finland here. I really like what you're doing. Uh, I need to tell you that you have our competitors in Finland for this project that you're running. <laughs> but um, um, I realized that you're not using Facebook. So my question is a little bit technical. Um, why aren't you using Facebook? And do you have free form reports um, to, for example, run tests and then run tests on uh, UI? And how huge is the volume of, uh, should I say, data that you're running on your leads every month? I don't have really strong numbers to support the statement, but I think that Facebook is more about friends and family, this kind of stuff, not about your professional life. So I focus on LinkedIn and Twitter. That's it. And uh, when it comes to data, what kind of data do you mean? So how many leads we generate, how many companies we filter, what was your, our database? So, uh, well, it was, it was more of a, what kind of technical challenges did you have? And uh, for example, if you're running, let's say, 
a hundred. Okay, great question. There is Tom, our CTO. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, perfect. So I can ask the technical guy. All right. So go ahead. Uh, so what is the technical challenge that you faced? Oh. Okay. So yeah, I'm, I'm Tom actually, and uh, I'm I'm working with Greg on robots. Uh, so we have a lot of uh, technical, uh, you know, uh, technical difficulties to to, to challenge with. Um, and uh, to be honest, for MVP, actually we are finishing it to uh, by the end of this this month. Uh, so as Greg said, nobody's uh, seen any any product. So actually, even Greg didn't see it. Uh, <laughs> so we finishing this uh, by the end of this month, and then we start a really really big fight with technology, with AI, machine learning, uh, with big data, and actually we need to crawl everything we see in the internet. So you know it's the big amount of data we need to connect with. We need to structure this uh, in, in 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 our databases, and uh, we use a lot of of lot of servers. So this uh, more than one million watt is from 500 startups for uh, infrastructure is really, really good good for us. And uh, yeah, we have a lot of challenges. We have this, you know, machine learning algorithms. Actually, nobody, um, right now, um, we have one big point to, um, to achieve. We need to, we actually want to build a software, uh, AI for, for, you know, for sales. And uh, we need to have a lot of steps uh, before we achieve this point. And uh, we start to build a team of really big, uh, good, great uh, machine learning specialists. And uh, that's the big challenge. Uh, we need to build something which is not built yet. Uh, actually, machine learning is about uh, algorithms uh, which uh, nobody, want, uh, nobody knows how to how to build that, what we want to achieve, and that's the really most exciting point here. So, yeah, that's my answer. Uh, I think we need to talk in private. Yeah. <laughs> I, got one, I got one more question to you. You mentioned YC and 500 startups. What's wrong with Texters? <laughs> that would be probably a third choice. Okie dokie. <laughs> Anyone else have a question? Okay, because you've talked a lot about the startups and everything, and I was listening to, I don't know if you know, there's something called Grid IO. There is a company who claims to have cre created uh, artificial intelligence to create websites automatically. They are collecting uh, money for now for for uh, li like a Kickstarter or something, but they are doing it like for one and a half year or something like that. And and many people are thinking that it's a scam. Um, and uh, as I heard from you, 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 you tried to build a product, so you don't have it. You you said that you will uh, have like a month to launch it. And you are building it. So, what are you selling right now? What who are you selling from for the all the time to those clients? Uh, are you selling an, a promise of a product? What are they paying for? I don't think anyone would pay for a year straight for a promise. So, what we did we decided to deliver the result of our product, not the product. So the people want sales leads, they want to sell more. We were selling them those sales opportunities and we charged them per each lead we generated. So we were working as a lead generation agency and building product as a part of our like agency life to improve our own processes. And this is how we know it's working because uh, we already generated almost $2 million of revenue for our customers and the software only automates all of the human process that we already have in place and that we know it's working. 